Welcome to Gran Turismo 7. Today we got some brand new GT7 news and today we're gonna talk about everything you need to know. From all of the new cars, the tracks, the customization. Spoiler alert, there is a ton of really cool stuff in there. From the campaign mode, how that works, the car dealerships, and all of the new features that were just announced today. So sit back and relax, this is gonna be a super cool video. Before we get into that though, there is something you should know. Gran Turismo 7 is gonna be my first proper in-depth look at a Gran Turismo game. I've played a little bit of GT Sport here on the channel before, but I never really put that much time into it. I've also played GT 4, 5, and 6 at friends' houses, but again, I never really put that much time into them. Well, now I've got my PS5, and when Gran Turismo 7 comes out next month, I'm gonna be playing a ton of it here on YouTube and on my Twitch channel channel so if you want to see any of that make sure you subscribe as I jump into the world of Gran Turismo. Anyways without further ado let's jump into everything you need to know about Gran Turismo 7 and why I'm super super excited for this game. Let's start it off with some of the really cool cars coming to GT7. Throughout this gameplay, you'll notice about 40 new vehicles coming to the game, which is really, really awesome. So feel free to pause whenever you want. Here are some of my personal favorites though. And I mean, we gotta start off with one of my all time favorite cars, this, the Red Bull X 2014 GT, whatever the actual name is. I love this thing in some of the previous GT games and I'm happy to see it coming back for this one. Again, as this is Gran Turismo, there are a ton Ton of really cool concept cars. There's also some really cool Japanese cars coming to the game like this race car Toyota Supra and this drift car the Subaru BRZ with this really nice wide body kit on it. If old classics are your thing there's also a ton of those in this game as well like this Renault Alpine, there's this Alfa Romeo Giulia, there's a bunch of old Jags, Ferraris, McLarens and a bunch more stuff honestly. And maybe the most strange thing of all is my favorite sort of vehicle in this game isn't the legendary supercars and hypercars, not the JDM icons, no, no, it's some of these. Yes, Gran Turismo 7 is bringing back the cheap and cheerful tiny little compact cars. And those actually lead us perfectly into the GT7 career mode, which yes, you're gonna have to start in these tiny little underpowered vehicles that you're gonna purchase from the used car dealer. That's where you're gonna find the latest and best deals for used vehicles in the game so you can pick them up there. There's also a new legendary car dealer. That's where you're gonna get some of the most expensive and sought after vehicles that are probably gonna carry a very, very hefty price tag. And then you've also got this, which is called Brand Central. That's probably where you're gonna spend the majority of your time if you plan to purchase new vehicles. Every car dealer kind of has like a storefront. It's kind of like a car mall and you can go and explore each car manufacturer's catalog and purchase your vehicle there. It's actually also worth noting the developers already said that GT7 is going to be getting more cars added into the game as time goes on through updates, which are probably going to be free like GT Sport was, but they didn't confirm that just yet. Speaking of content at launch, at launch GT7 is going to have 34 locations to drive in. Some real, some fictional, obviously a lot of those in Japan. I've noted down some of my personal favorites like Suzuka, Fuji Speedway, Tsukuba, which is going to be awesome. There's there's a Tokyo Expressway and a high speed ring. You've also got some classic locations like the Goodwood Hill Climb in there and some awesome circuits scattered around America as well. And what's really awesome is that the developers actually confirmed that there's actually two graphics options for this game, a frame rate option and a ray tracing option. I'm particularly interested in that second option. The developers actually worked on a really cool weather system for GT7 where depending on where you're racing in the world, the weather is going to look a little bit different because let's just say you're racing out in California, for example, the weather and the sky in California is going to look very different to the weather in the sky, say in Australia or Japan or the UK and things like that. All of that with ray tracing should look absolutely amazing. Anyways, though, let's bring it back to the cars and the customization of those cars because today some brand new features were just revealed for this and they're really, really cool. So let me read through this list. Number one, there are window stickers in this game. So when you're going in and making a wrap for your vehicle, you can place those decals on the windows, which make 
your vehicle just come to life depending on what you're trying to recreate or build. You've also got wide bodies that you can toss onto your car. You swap rear wings with different styles, rear lips, and so on. You've also got the ability to upgrade your vehicles by adding in a roll cage and then choosing the style of that roll cage. I love little details like this. That looks absolutely fantastic. I know it was already spoken about a little while ago, but yes, brakes are coming to Gran Turismo 7, so you can upgrade those with legit parts from Brembo, which should be good. Yes, oil changes and car washes are also back for GT7, which should be fun. Again, it just adds some added realism to the game, which is fun. And you've also got a full tuning menu to choose and upgrade the parts that you have on your vehicles, and then even go as in-depth as choosing things like your turbo mode, your anti-lag, your handbrake mode, and more. For some strange reason, they even allow you the option of making your car quieter by adding silencers to your exhaust. I I don't know anybody who's actually gonna do that, but it's it's an option, so there you go. Speaking of the sound of your vehicles, in this game there's actually a new feature called 3D audio, which is super, super cool, which is basically gonna take the audio of your vehicle and bounce it off everything around you depending on where you're driving in the world. Say, for example, you're driving down a street, the sound of your car is gonna be bouncing off the trees, bouncing off the other cars around you, bouncing off the ground and the walls and everything like that. It should make for some really cool sounds, especially when you're driving through tunnels and all of that sound is just echoing all the way down the tunnel. It should be really cool. Another really cool thing the developers actually mentioned was the PlayStation 5 haptic feedback on the controllers. If you haven't used a PlayStation 5 controller before, the triggers are super, super cool. They'll actually push against you. Obviously, I haven't played Gran Turismo 7 just yet, so I don't know what it feels like for myself, but the developers did say it's really, really cool on braking when you're engaging ABS or when you lock up your wheels. Saying that though, I feel like like I'm actually gonna be playing GT7 more on a wheel. I played a little bit of GT Sport on a controller and it felt okay, but I feel like a game like this should be played on a wheel, but I'm not really sure, so let me know in the comments down below what you would suggest. Maybe when the game first comes out, I'll switch between controller and wheel and see a little bit of both and let you guys know how it feels if you're interested for yourself, but but we'll see. I, I feel like I'm gonna be on a wheel. Though. Anyways, last but not least, there are three game modes I wanted to talk about in GT7, starting off with the Car Cafe. The easiest way to describe the Car Cafe is essentially challenges that the game gives you, and as you're completing these challenges, you'll learn about the history of the vehicles that you're driving. So much so, you'll actually sometimes have the designers of the actual vehicles that you're driving come to talk to you about the history of the vehicle, the design process, Process and things like that. So the way the car cafe actually works though is you actually get presented with a menu and you can choose a challenge off that menu to complete. Once you complete that challenge, you'll get money in the game, which you can spend on cars, which is awesome. In total, there's 30 challenges in the game, and once you complete all the challenges, you beat Gran Turismo. I'm not sure how long that'll take, but there you go. Game mode number two that I wanted to talk about was, yes, the driver's licenses are returning. I guarantee you, as I'm trying to complete these, some controllers will be thrown, because these are infuriating some of the most challenging things I've ever done in any racing game ever they're gonna be a challenge for sure. And last but not least, game mode number three is the music rally mode. And this mode seems really weird to me. If you ever played any car racing arcade games from like the 80s, 90s, and even the early 2000s, where you had like a time minute on the clock and you basically had to get from checkpoint to checkpoint to extend the amount of time you had, that's what the music rally is. Don't get me wrong, it sounds really cool and I'm sure I'll give it a go. I'm just not sure in the long run how many people People are actually going to be using a feature like that or a game mode like that in a game that comes out in 2022. So there you have it. That is everything you need to know about Gran Turismo 7 today. I'm super excited to try this game out for myself. It's like jumping into a brand new experience, a brand new world, and I'm excited to see what the world of GT7 brings to the table. It's looking really, really good, but I'm excited to get hands on in the future. If you do want to see more Gran Turismo 7 videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss them. Thank Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon with some more. See you then. Bye.